it's uh it's time to sort of boggle your mind. Yep. I need I need your undivided attention. This is one where I don't want you to follow along. I just want you to understand what's happening. Um, so you know how like we, we had that cycle where you have to construct geometry, deconstruct geometry, and then reconstruct geometry? Seems redundant. But um, sometimes you also have to flatten geometry and then graft it again. So it might already be grafted into a tree. You might need to flatten it and then graft it into separate branches in a different way. So the reason I want to show you um, that as a difference here, and I'm going to show you some data sets. Um, let me turn this off. And we'll put a panel on it. That looks like that. Okay, so that's your reference. That's where we came from. Uh, the original configuration of the grid tool is to set it up in rows and columns, right? But since we flattened it, it looks like this. One solid list of all of that information. So the challenge is um, here the information gets read in little groups, and this one gets read linearly. So when I do this loft operation, I've fed it 100 different polyline curves. And when you loft 100 different curves in Rhino, what does it do? <laughs> Sometimes it might crash. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, it, it takes those curves in the order that you selected them, and it lofts every single one of them. So that's what's happening here in this operation, right? This operation is saying, all right, give me my first curve, uh, loft, right? Give me my second curve, loft. Third curve, loft. And it's all one loft. So that's what you're seeing here is this thing is lofting from the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth to the sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then going back to the first one, or going back to the eleventh one, sorry. Um, and then it's just continuing along that whole thing, and it's creating this little flat, you know, whatever you want to call it. But what we can do is flatten it so that it reads as a solid list like we have here, and then graft it into separate data trees for each individual item. That's important. So um, let's go to params. Where is that? It's under sets tree. Sorry. Um, so we're going to go to graft tree. So remember, this one was in groups of 10. We flattened it to a list of 100. Now we're going to graft it into a list that looks like this. Now, every single one of those items is in a separate group. Why do you think I did that? <laughs> Closer with combine. Um, so I did that so that we can have one curve and another curve. and. <laughs> loft them individually. So now the difference between, let me pull this aside again, actually. We're going to have a whole bunch of panels up on this one. What, um, where did you get the graph from again? Good question. Uh, this is under params, and, or no, I'm sorry, it's under sets and tree. Set tree, yeah. Uh, and loft is under surface. Is it freeform? Yeah, thank you. I know, right? Uh, okay, so now you guys are looking at like three completely different data sets. Um, I'm going to set these two over here. And then this one is for the graft. Let me move this down too. Um, so now we've got the original ones in individual groups, but now I need to get the new ones, which are these, into groups as well. So I look at that list, and it looks like this. So what do I have to do? Um, you have to flatten it. The reverse of flatten oh, okay. is 
Grafting it. Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm just doing the same operation that I did on this list so that it looks like that. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to put that on this geometry, which is going to make it look like that. You guys following so far? So now I've got this loft command that I'm going to do on those two lists. So I've got uh, this graft and this graft. I'm going to pair up uh, the original whoops, with the new one. And it didn't do anything. We have 200 values. Ah. Uh, no, I know what's going on. So um, this one, I don't expect you guys to get this yet, but take a look at these, that and that. Um, this is how big the data tree is. And um, I'm going to go through and show you the graphic. And this is a video that you're going to want to remember for later. I don't expect you to remember it right now. Um, but let's take a look at that tree. Draw a tree. Um, let me move this stuff out of the way. And uh, copy and paste that here. And then this tree. There you go. See the difference? Um, it's a graphic difference, again. Um, but uh, so the difference is that these tree branches run many. Um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, steps deep, um, or only two steps deep, and then this one runs many steps deep. So like we have to like re-flatten and flatten and flatten and flatten it to get it to read the way we really want it to read. So let me take a look at this one. This one was four of them. So we might need to flatten it first and then graft it. So let's go to set tree. Can I do it? No. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right tool. It's been a while since I've done this one. Will this flatten do it? There we go. Okay, so um, this is what I'm going to interject. These are our grafting items. I'm going to pull that over there. Um, so this flatten reduced uh, that, that uh, number of branches to zero after we flattened it. Okay, so it's like a double flatten in a way. Um, because in this case, let me explain it this way. Um, the square grid cells were one step deep, right? We created square grids, which meant it had two branches for the generation of the square cells and I guess where they sat. But um, that's why it had two branches, or two steps to the branch. Um, in this case, what we had here, it was so deep because we did four separate operations on it, which means it goes four separate steps deep, so you can trace those tree branches down to the original geometry. Does that make sense? At least conceptually? Um, so we have to flatten, flatten it to get it to be completely zero, like that. And then we're going to flatten, flatten the other one, this one. And then that one's going to be complete. Well, that one's already completely zero. Um, so now they should talk to each other when we have the grafted version, which is that. OK, cool. So um, again, I don't expect you to fully understand what just happened as long as you understand conceptually what happened and um, and you sort of have, I think, uh, a better understanding of how branches are so important. Um, when you pay attention to them in the future, it should help you out. Okay? So, um, that said, uh, Yeah, well, I mean, it's a pretty cool result, right? Um, so now we have this like randomized, you know, fluted pattern that we can start messing with. We can 
change the height, change how many different numbers we're working with, change the steps or the jitter, right? How many grid cells we want. So it's pretty powerful. Anyway, um, so I, I don't want to overwhelm you or scare you or intimidate you, but like when we get stuck on things, that's the kind of troubleshooting we're going to have to do, right? You're going to have to look at how's the data structured? Where's the misalignment? In this case, luckily, the misalignment was only in how many branches it, it was processing. It wasn't in how many items I was getting, which can happen when you do some weird stuff. So. Um, anyway, I don't need you to follow along with me on that one. I just wanted you to see it. Um, what questions do you have? No questions? For the most confusing thing I've done yet, I find that surprising. <laughs> Your hand was up first. No, uh, good question, because it kind of looks like that, but these are um, sets of branches. So notice how the diagram now looks the same. Mm -hmm. um, without that flatten, um, let me go to this one again. Put that data, actually, yeah, we can just use this one. Um, where was that? I will go to this data. Yeah, so this data um, has four steps. The difference here is that you know the version here that we did for move it only has like one move on a whole set of data before we split it up into separate groups and flattened it so that's why there aren't as many fanning out but the key is how many circles there are right because however many circles there are generally speaking that's how many operations you performed on the original geometry which is the cells right the grid so we we split the grid, or rather, um, we moved the grid, I think, and then we split it, and then we did some other stuff. And Anyway, um, then we jostled it around. So every single one of those commands is represented by a circle on this graph, which is listed as one of these. I don't know what the terminology for it is, but um, one of these um, set identifiers, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, that's why this one looks different, because there are only two circles. And then there are only two here. Other questions? Yeah. So oh, you had a question too. Um, you, yes, but you have to do the bake thing that I showed you on the first day. We'll get there. So for a while, we're going to work in this environment till we understand the geometry better. Then when we actually produce stuff, We'll, well, it's like exporting, but Grasshopper calls it baking, and we push it out into Rhino, and then we can render with it. So if you want to make specific changes, you have to manually No, um, you would just not jitter it. So this is specific. I mean, the pattern, you can see the pattern. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Couldn't do. Oh, oh, sure. Um, the the geometry. So I'm trying to figure out a way to explain this differently. But um, even though the geometry is organized in the same fashion, it's at a different level. That's how you can kind of think of it. Is like, it it all needs to be at the same level of operation because the information is is retained throughout so um, these being at zero zero match um, let me put this up here too okay they match in terms of like what the operation is and how that geometry got to be where it is and there isn't any residual geometry being carried through if that makes any sense I think that's how to describe it um, but I mean, you don't really need to know why you just need to know that these need to match when you're trying to do a lofting type operation. 
many operations are like that. Not all of them, but many. Um, you had a question too, right? You had a question? Oh, okay. Anybody else? All right, we might have beaten a dead horse on that one a little bit, but um, yeah, so pay attention to this stuff. Um, most of the stuff we're gonna do for the first couple weeks, we won't encounter a problem like this. I didn't expect to encounter it here, um, but now you know. <laughs>